on one photo raw has a texture filter and this filter can be used to do so many creative things today we're going to explore exactly how you can use it on your images now I want to be fair, I'm going to have access to some textures that you will not have access to, and that's perfectly fine. Instead of using the exact images or the exact textures that I'm using, I want you to grasp the idea and then go use your own images or find your own textures to overlay them onto your images. Now, as always, if you want to save some money when shopping at the On One store, consider using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20. I make a small commission from everyone who uses it, but that's at no extra charge to you. I greatly appreciate everyone who uses it. Now let's jump into On One Photo Raw and learn how to use the texture filters on our images. So here we are inside of On One Photo Raw, and I have a JPEG image that I'm editing, and I created this using my Canon EOS R6 Mark two and I did the focus bracketing internal to the camera that's really irrelevant for today's lesson but I do want to make sure that you understand the image that we are actually starting to modify and that's the other reason why I'm working with a JPEG image because yes I do use JPEG images in some of my edits now with all of that out of the way I'm not worried so much about the exposure of the image because it's a JPEG. I baked in the profile straight from the camera. I'm actually happy with the exposure. This was a black backdrop. So everything that needed to be lit is well lit and I'm ready to just get creative with the image. So first thing that I want to do is just apply a texture filter. You can do that by clicking on add filter and then come over here to textures. And by default, it's gonna give you this wall, cool concrete look, and that may be something that you want to go with, that may not be something that you wanna go with. To change it, all you have to do is come over here to where it says category, and then you're gonna get a long list of uh, categories here. Now, mind you, everything above the break that says my textures, you should have access to, because that comes with on one photo raw. Now, if you're a member to the Plus subscription, you can go and download some textures. And if you're not, and you wanna save some money, you already know there's a coupon code for you. Now, down here below the My Textures are all of the things that I've imported either from On One or from my personal collection or other collections that I have purchased or collected over the years. It's really not that important. Just find textures that you want to work with, okay? Now, for me, the first thing that I want to do here is kind of replace that black background with something a little bit more fun and creative. So the first one that I'm going to use is actually from the On One collection, and it's a Springtime Serenity collection. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Now, we can't really see anything except for the flower gets a little bit more colorful. So if I turn it off, turn it back on, and maybe that's what you're going for. That's not what I really want to do in my edit today. So instead, what I'm going to do is go ahead and click on this area where it says mode, and I'm going to switch this over to replace. Now, what replace does is exactly what it sounds like it's doing. It's replacing the image with your texture image because all a texture really is, is another image that On One is referencing and overlaying on top of your original image. Now, if I pull up on the opacity, you can see that I just get the image replaced. And if I pull down on the opacity here, it's the same thing. Now, these opacity sliders or this opacity slider, I should say, is really no different than the opacity slider that's up here at the top, because if I pull that down, I get the original image. And if I pull it up, then I get the image that I'm replacing the original image with. All right, pretty straightforward. Don't worry so much about these opacity sliders. Not right now, choose one, work with it, go for it. But what I could also do is I can change the texture image inside of the category. So remember, the top portion here is the category, and I can just scroll through these, select any category that I want to work in. I'm not going to change my category, but I could. And then 
internal to that category, there's different images. And that's where the texture pops up. So if I click this little drop down, you can see I got a ton of different options available to me. All right. Now, the one that I'm going to go with is right here, Spring Serenity number three. I'm going to click that and I have done what I wanted to do. I'm kidding. I didn't. What I really want to do is make this blend in with the image. So the first way that I'm going to get this to blend in is through masking. All right. All filters inside of on one come with a image mask. So let's just go ahead and use that. I'm going to click on my mask here and I'm going to come up here and grab my masking bug. And that's going to give me my linear gradient. Now I'm just going to click on the image and you could already see what's happening here. Now, this is where your creativity has to run wild and you just have to explore and enjoy making the image. All right. Don't worry so much about if you're doing the right thing, the wrong thing. There's no such thing. All right. Just experiment. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and rotate this around this way because I really only care to get rid of the space that's up there that's black. I don't really want that. So, you know, we're going to get rid of it. I'm going to go ahead and pull out on these perforated edges, and that's going to kind of blend this in with the overall image. All right. Now I can move this up and down by grabbing this larger circle and I can just pull it all the way up, pull it down. I can do all kinds of stuff. So for this first image that I'm adding on to or the first layer of texture, I'm going to go ahead and probably do it something like this maybe even pull this in so that way I get like a little bit of a harsher line, but it's going over my flower. Now, I don't really care for that, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that off of the flower. The way that you do that is you grab the brush and then I already have it set to erase. You can see that up here in my brush uh, tools. And I am going to make my brush size just a little bit larger. And I'm not really trying to make this perfect, but I am going to use the perfect eraser. To do so, I'm going to hit Command and R on my keyboard. That's going to bring up this pop up just saying, hey, this is how to use the perfect eraser. I'll leave it on just so that way I remember to explain it in future tutorials. I'm going to hit close. Now, all I have to do is keep the center of my brush inside of the flower and I can paint over the edges. And look, I am now erasing that from my flower. And when I say that, I mean the textured background. I'm erasing that from my flower. So I'm getting rid of all this color, but it's not going over the edge into the actual background. So I'm going to get a more accurate mask. It's easier to show if I hit the letter O and you can see what's happening here with the flower. And I can definitely uh, switch between turning this brush off and on. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the letter O and I'm going to hit command and R again to turn it off slightly for a brief second. And then I'll come over here. Now I realized I just missed and went over the edge here. If I hit the letter O, you can kind of see, and that may not even be that big of a deal, but I'm still going to mess with it. So I'm going to go back, hit command and R and we'll just hit close again. This time I'm going to switch over to paint and I'm going to paint and that's not going to work. So instead, I'm just going to hit Command and Z and I will continue using. We'll leave it on Command and R, hit Shift and X. All right, there we go. And then I'm just going to go back and repaint this away. All right. Now, I'm not overly concerned about getting that completely off of the flower. There's a little bit of pink in the flower to begin with. So I'm actually OK with that edge. I just wanted to clean it up a little bit. Now, what I can do is turn this off, turn it back on, and I get to sample, see what it looks like. I think that we're doing pretty good. I'm just going to call this layer one. And now we're going to add another texture layer. So hit add filter. We will click on textures. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going back to the exact same texture pack, which is the spring textures. I'm going to do the same thing. So replace. And this time I want to use the first texture that's here on top. I'm going to go ahead and put this up relatively high. I'm going with a 90% opacity. I could change that later. 
I'm going to hit the letter M this time on my keyboard to get the masking bug. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Click and rotate it around. And I'll come somewhere about here. And then we'll just pull this down. And I'm going to fade it in. And you can see how having that lower opacity just kind of helps with the background uh, fading through. So if I bring down this opacity even further, I'm just getting a more dynamic background, right? So if I were to turn off layer one, you can see I still get a background, but the background that we have in layer one, I'm really enjoying. So that's the reason why I'm going in that direction, but I'm having the same issue with this being painted over the flower. Now, I actually have a different method of correcting this. I didn't show you earlier, and so I'm just going to go ahead and reset the mask. So I'm going to right click and hit reset. And the first thing that I like to do whenever I know that I want to use a gradient mask over the image is I like to grab the quick mask AI brush. And I like to just remove the areas of the image that I know I don't want this adjustment to go into. And the quick mask just makes it really easy for me to do that. That's the reason why I use it. And all I'm going to do is just click over here in all of these areas where I know I do not want this adjustment that I'm applying. And then already have it set to erase. And then I'll just hit the blue check mark. And now that's going to remove that layer or that texture from the flower. Then what I can do is I can come over here, grab my masking bug, which is going to be the gradient mask. And then I'm going to hit the plus icon. This is going to add a mask on top of my AI mask. It's easier to see this in the mask overlay. So I'm going to hit the letter O and then I'm going to rotate this around. You see how I'm still getting the protection of my flower that I used the quick mask AI uh, to remove from this layer or from this mask. So now if I hit the letter O, you can see exactly how that works out. And this is one of my favorite ways of really combining masks. And it's not the easiest to fully understand inside of On One, but compound masking is the technique. And I really do use this relatively often in order to get different looks in my images. So I just wanted to kind of showcase that here because it does work really, really well to help me with this. And it looks like I missed a spot in here. So what I'm going to do is pull this all the way back here. So I'm at 100 percent. I'm going to grab my brush. I'm going to use the perfect brush again. Hit shift X. And hopefully this time what I can do is just paint right here in the middle to bring in. I went over. So I'll do this in a few different passes. And all I really want to do is just fill this area in with that background texture. And it doesn't have to be entirely perfect because I actually start my fade somewhere around here. So now when I go back to my linear gradient, I can just pull this up and start to am I on the right texture. I'm on the wrong one. There we go. Now we'll come back. And I think I actually painted that in in the wrong area. And this is one of the challenges of working. Let me hit the letter O. No, I think I was on the right mask. Yeah, I was. So why is my masking bug not doing what it's supposed to do? Very interesting. There we go. Sometimes you just got to troubleshoot. And I don't cut this stuff out anymore because this is just the reality of working inside of software. Sometimes you just got to work through the through some things. So because I use the brush tool, it over overrode. I think that's how you'll say that the masking gradient. So I had to reestablish it. And that's what we're seeing here. But you can see I'm still getting the same exact look. So now I just need to fade this in. However, I so choose maybe something like this. And I think that that looks really good. So the last thing that I'll do to kind of top this off and really give this the look that I think I want to go with is I'm going to add in, you know what, we will add in a local adjustment, hit add, and then I'm going to hit the letter M to get a 
radial adjustment this time. So we'll just, we'll come up here and select strong vignette, click right here in the middle, pull this in, and I want to increase that. And we want to go edges, there we go. And then I'm gonna rotate it around. I'm gonna make this like really, really long and narrow and put it like off the image a little bit and then just fade this in and maybe even shrink this down a bit more. Again, pulling it off the image. I just wanna make it look like the sun is just coming down on here. So we'll go like so, go to color. We'll increase the color here or the temperature and maybe even saturate it a little bit. And you know what? Again, this is just how I work. I'm gonna try paint with color. I'm gonna change the color to something a little bit more drastic like there. And then I'll pull it off again and just kind of fade this out over the image. And instead of using a solid paint, let's go with classic. We'll hit the vibrance, maybe increase the exposure and the midtones. And then let's take a look here. Let's turn it off and turn it back on. I'm not quite sure I like what it's doing here. So instead of modifying the luminosity, let's go ahead and click on blending, switch this over to color, and we'll just fade this in. It's not quite doing exactly what I was expecting it to do. So we'll just get rid of it. And that's one of the cool things about working inside a software like on one. And hopefully you've seen me do that enough that you knew that if I didn't like it, I was just going to delete it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the before. If I hold down the backslash key, we just had that black background, which is perfectly fine because that's how I shot the image. And then we've added in a few textures with some masking, able to get a different look on the overall photo. Hopefully you found some value in today's content. If you did, please smash that like button and share this content with someone who you think would find it valuable. If you want to save some money when you purchase on one or shop over at the on one store, consider using my coupon code freewillphotos20. It'll save you some money. I make a small commission, but that's at no extra charge to you. If you want to learn more about using On One Photo Raw, consider signing up for a coaching call with me where I'll walk you through step by step and answer questions that you have specifically about the software. If that's something you're interested in, check the description box below. There's a link that'll take you to the sign up page. Until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating.